So the other day, I'm on the internet.com, and all of a sudden, a story crosses my feed related to the so-called Victoria's Secret Karen from July of 2021, and this article explains in great detail that the woman at the heart of this video was not, in fact, an evil white racist, that this was a wild misunderstanding, and more importantly, she was actually suffering from a developmental disability, which we'll get into a little bit later. Then, all of a sudden, I see the Young Turks, Anna Kasparian in particular, do a retraction based on their previous coverage, and based on the fact that they attacked a mentally disabled person for what amounted to, worst case scenario, a petty dispute at a Victoria's Secret. But then, I got to thinking, and that thinking led me to search this story in Rayshad Ritchie's YouTube channel, and what I ultimately ended up finding out is that Rayshad Ritchie doxed a mentally disabled woman in order to make money, gin up racial hysteria, because that's exactly what he does. Now, we're going to get into this. We're going to go to the original video, which, by the way, has no update, no retraction from Rayshad Ritchie, and we're going to talk about it in great detail. But before we do, I want to say thank you to everybody who signed up over on actualjusticewarrior.com slash join. I will give me the money. Give you give me the money. Okay. And thank you to the podcast listeners, Spotify, Apple, and Google's podcasting platform. Remember, I've talked about how Karens of the world, uh, the reason why they feel empowered is because typically there has been this hand in glove relationship as it relates to Karens and cops. So they will weaponize their Karenicity because the responding police or whoever comes as an authority figure will typically take the side of the Karen. Well, case in point, fake fainting Karen. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish a Karen would. So the way that Rayshad Ritchie opens this is with a ridiculous premise that these Karens are out there and they're working hand in glove with law enforcement in order to weaponize their Karenicity in order to go after black people because the police always take the sides of the Karens. And of course, he repeats this uncritically. This came out the day that the full video came out. We actually highlighted this Karen briefly yesterday, but we did not have all of the video yet. Now we have a lot more. He did a video the day before based on partial video that was released, and we could tell by the title the angle that he's coming from, which is Karen fakes tears during assault, fakes and tears by the way, in all caps. And yeah, this is a long-standing pattern from Rayshad Ritchie, who is desperate to find evil white racism. He's desperate to profit off of evil white racism. However, the supply is nowhere near his enormous demand for these kind of stories. So what he's reduced himself to in his infinite pathetic mediocrity is going after viral videos without context of people getting into petty arguments and trying to blow them up into national stories. And of course, course, much like the city by Karen, which was an absolute lie, a fraud perpetuated in part by Rayshad Ritchie, he decided to go that one step further and release this woman's place of employment along with her full name in an effort to get her fired. Ladies and gentlemen, this incident occurred in Short Hill Mall in Milburn, New Jersey, where police refused to escort a violent and aggressive and disorderly Karen out of a victorious secret, okay? So this is the setup from Rayshad Ritchie. This woman is violent, she is aggressive, and the police refuse to escort her out of Victoria's Secret. And obviously this is because the police allegedly are in fact evil white racists, and they're working for the evil white racist system on behalf of this woman who was violent and attacking people, allegedly, but, you know, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Rayshad Ritchie found a viral snippet of this woman's life, so that's enough to go on in order to attack her, call for her firing, release her place of employment, and try to get her fired and her life ruined. They told the black female who was attacked that there is nothing they can do. They are not escorting this violent individual away from the store or off the property. So Rayshad is making a big deal out of the fact that the police said there was nothing they could do in this instance. They couldn't escort this woman out. And by the way, this was largely due to the fact that Victoria's Secret didn't want to throw her out and mall security didn't want to throw her out. And she hadn't actually committed a crime, despite what Rayshad Ritchie is implying right here. Oh, God. No, excuse, excuse. Uh, 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 now you are. Oh, my God. Do you see this? 
Oh my God, I've ne girl, I never thought nothing like this would happen to me. She just tried to run and hit me. <laughs> don't record me! Don't, don't. <laughs> You keep lying saying I'm threatening you, so I'm recording to protect myself. There's a few things that you need to notice about this right here. First and foremost, this woman does not want to be recorded. That is why at the beginning of the video, she is swiping at the phone in order to prevent herself from being recorded. By the way, this is not an unreasonable ask. You are in a Victoria's Secret. It is an underwear store. It is a private location. I know it's open to the public, but it makes sense for her to not want to be recorded, especially when you think about the reasons and what ultimately ended up happening. The second thing that you'll notice is that she's acting really erratically. Obviously, it seems like it's overdramatic, or it might be indication of something wrong mentally. It turns out it was true. It is something wrong mentally, which we'll talk about in a minute. But thirdly, the woman recording is laughing at her. This whole video is being presented as that woman on the ground is a danger to this black woman, but this black woman is enjoying every aspect of this story. But Rayshad Ritchie actually gets a lot worse in a moment, and I want to play that so you guys can understand how bad he bungled this segment. She called the police on me now. And I can't believe this long and security not here. Please, please, get the cops here, we get the cops here. This is how black people be dying. You see this? Now, it says right there that Victoria's Secret Karen used white tears on the police. Again, you could see that she's in distress. You could see that she's acting abnormal. You could see that the black woman behind the camera isn't exactly threatened by this person. And she keeps saying, stop filming me. Now, I will tell you that what is going on here is is in fact a mental breakdown from somebody who is in fact developmentally disabled. And when you think about that, you can kind of understand why somebody doesn't want their mental breakdown to be filmed by a woman who intends to post this on social media, who is laughing about this, and who clearly and obviously has no care in the world for the mental health of the person that she got into this petty dispute with. You here, get the cops here. This is how black people be dying. You see this? Now, she also adds that this is how black people be dying. Now, I just need to point out that it has never happened in this country that a white woman crying called the police on somebody that was filming them, and that led to that person being shot. This is a made-up narrative, the idea that a significant number of unarmed people in the United States, let alone unarmed black people, are being shot by the police is absurd. I know that there's polling out there that shows that if you're on the left wing, if you're likely to be listening to somebody like Rayshad Ritchie, you might think that number is north of 10,000, but it's actually about nine, and a significant portion of those nine are actively trying to take a police officer's gun or driving a vehicle at a police officer, which is what you find out when you investigate those cases. But again, I just want to point out that this woman is in no danger at all whatsoever. She's laughing and she's filming somebody for 15 minutes having a freak out. She is not suffering from a mental health disorder. Uh, I know that some people will look at that and, and assume so. Um, she's a teacher's aide at a school called Cedar Grove. Um, that is what she does for a living. So it's very interesting that right there, Rayshad Ritchie says that this woman is not suffering from a mental disorder. He then goes on to state her job title and where she works so that he could dox this woman, who again, he has assured his audience is not suffering from a mental disorder. But the thing is, Rayshad is completely wrong. Not only is this person suffering from a mental disorder, but when we go to the New York Times article on the subject matter, this was something that could have been easily found out by the viewing public, by Rayshad Ritchie, but he didn't care because he had a story where a white person appeared to be acting bad and having a petty dispute with the black person, and he needed to blow that up in order to get clicks and views, in order to attack this woman, and in order to weaponize his audience, in order to get her fired from her job, because, you know, bullying a mentally ill person is okay, because Rayshad Ritchie is so desperate for more instances of evil white racism, and supply is just not meeting demand adequately. So what we find out is that Ukenta had gone there to use a coupon for a free pair of Victoria's Secret underwear. Another shopper, Abigail Elpick, 
got too close, according to Akenta, leading her to ask the woman to move six feet away. Remember, this is during the whole COVID-19 pandemic situation, and it's in the state of New Jersey. Now, I'm guessing Ukenta was not being all that polite, because this caused the woman to complain to the cashier about what she said or how she said it. Ukenta began recording, and then this is when the drama started. Now, you might not be able to hear it through the hysteria, but Miss Elphick was asking Ukenta to stop recording her mental breakdown. Now, Ukenta summoned security while Elphick called the police, and for 15 minutes, she recorded this woman having that breakdown. Now, the thing is, despite what Rayshad Ritchie said about her not having any mental condition, evidence is overwhelming to the contrary. She is not suffering from a mental health disorder. Uh, I know that some people will look at that and, and assume so. Um, she's a teacher's aide at a school called Cedar Grove. Um, that is what she does for a living. You see, Elphick 27 actually lives in a complex reserved for residents with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Her behavior stemmed not from a race-based problem, according to a complaint filed by her lawyers, but from fear that being filmed would lead to a loss of her job. Now, I want you to think about that for a second. This woman lived specifically in a residence that is designed to cater to the needs of the developmentally disabled. They ended up getting her a job as a teacher's aide so that she can earn some level of income. And one of the things she was most worried about was the fact that this recording could ultimately end up leading to her firing. Rayshad Ritchie decided not only was he going to release this woman's first and last name, not only was he going to lie because he had no evidence to support that claim, which makes it a lie, and say that she has no mental disability. She is not suffering from a mental health disorder. Uh, I know that some people would look at that and, and assume so. But he would also release the name of her employer and talk about her exact position. Um, she's a teacher's aide at a school called Cedar Grove. Um, that is what she does for a living. Which is, by the way, his intentional move in order to get this woman fired. So her fear was 100% founded because race hustlers like Rayshad Ritchie, who are looking for a quick buck, looking to profit off of the racism narrative, decided to do exactly what she was worried about. So even this mentally disabled person was aware enough of the consequences of being white and getting into a petty dispute with a black person who, of course, is going to release her own context for the video, and this ultimately ended up being exactly what Rayshad Ritchie decided to do. What happened in that clip you just saw was her attempted assault and perhaps actual assault of a black female patron in Victoria's Secret. As soon as she realized that she was actually being recorded is when she decided to have a breakdown because she realized that a camera was rolling. Yeah, Rayshad, she had a breakdown because A, she was mentally disabled, and she knew people like you wouldn't give a damn about her disability based on the color of her skin, and you would decide to go after her place of employment because God forbid there's ever a petty dispute between a black person and a white person, and God forbid Rayshard Ritchie wait even a second to check any facts before he starts asserting things and releasing this woman's place of employment. When the mall security finally showed up, she explains to the mall security what happened, and it is useless. The mall security, they basically do nothing. Now, we don't know the context of this situation. We don't know if the security actually knew this woman, knew she was mentally disabled, but obviously they assumed that there wasn't a big threat to her because you have a woman crying on the ground. This woman pettily is trying to get her escorted out while she's filming her and laughing at her while also playing the victim. The police arrive and this is how they treat the African-American female who has already been assaulted. This woman has chased her around Victoria's Secret. When you look at the full video, this is how the police responded to this black female who was a victim. So I was attacked in the mall, almost attacked in the mall. The manager, I had to run behind her. I chased him around. He telling me he can escort me to my car, but she's not, she doesn't have to leave the mall. Listen, I don't work for the mall. I can't order her out of here. Yeah, but you work for Milburn. I was just almost assaulted in this mall. So Rayshard Ritchie cuts to the police saying that they can't really do anything about this because mall security doesn't want this woman to leave. Maybe, by the way, in context, they actually know this woman. She's actually a frequent guest of the mall. They know that she's developmentally disabled. This is never mentioned, so we don't actually know. And 
And Victoria's Secret is not trying to throw this woman out, presumably because her conduct in the initial interaction would lead Victoria's Secret to believe that it would be unfair to throw this woman out. But Rayshad frames this as evil white racism because the police aren't going to escort this woman out, who both Victoria's Secret and Mall Security do not believe is trespassing. Very interesting how he leaves that context out in order to attack the police as evil white racists. And she's crying and they just being all sympathetic to her tears. I don't care about her white tears. No, she should be escorted out the mall. She tried to attack me twice. You doing that because she white and she crying. Now the police are comforting her. Again, this could be due to the fact that she told them about her mental disability. Sometimes these people have cards or whatever, and the police have more context from the situation, you know, because they're actually talking to this woman rather than recording her in order to put the video out in multi-part installments in order to maximize the damage and maximize the profit for the woman behind the camera. You have patrons inside of the store telling the black female to leave. You have the police officer telling her she needs to move away from the situation. Again, Rayshad Ritchie, who lied about this woman not having a mental disability, is now saying that you had people who were in the store, so people who witnessed the interaction prior to the video being recorded, people who work at the store, again, people who witnessed the interaction prior to the video being recorded, all saying that this woman needs to leave. And rather than think, if everybody in the situation thinks that the woman behind the camera is the actual problem, and there might be something to that, Rayshaw just assumes that this is all evil white racism and it's a bunch of evil white racists, even though we could see on the video how she is provoking and laughing at this woman, who again, we find out is intellectually disabled to the point where she has to live in a community for people who are intellectually disabled. Now, I want you to imagine, what if this was a black male chasing a white female inside of Victoria's Secret? What if it was a black female chasing a white female to physically assault her inside of Victoria's Secret? Do you think the outcome would have been the same? Let's talk about one of those scenarios, Rayshad. If a white woman was filming a black woman acting crazy, it would never make it to the air of your show. You would never talk about it. You would never discuss it. Whether or not it turned out that the black woman were intellectually disabled. If we found out two years later that a black woman that we assumed to be just acting crazy for no reason was actually intellectually disabled and had legitimate reasons for why she had a mental breakdown and was asking the white woman behind the camera not to film the mental breakdown, you would have done a segment immediately condemning everybody based on the races. But in this case, you didn't even care to check. You immediately published this woman's place of business so that you can get your audience to harass her and try to get her fired. You know the truth of that question. I don't care what political affiliation you may have. You know the truth of the question I just posed. Yeah, Rayshad, the truth of the question that you just posed is that it would not have been a national news story, not at all. And by the way, the woman behind the camera actually raised $104,000 on a GoFundMe based on the idea that she said she needed help fighting back against Karen. In that GoFundMe, she implied that there was some legal case she was going to file against the mall, against Victoria's Secret, against the police, or against her. But it turned out she just kind of spent the money, and when asked what she did with it, she didn't really answer the question, but she did say something to the effect of, a lot of people use my viral video, I should be able to make money off of it. And she completely lied. She's trying to say I started videotaping her, causing her to have a panic attack. So I'm filing a complaint against the two officers that responded. I didn't feel protected. They didn't act, They didn't try to make from the woman that was trying that attacked me and chased me around the store. They didn't ask her to leave or anything. I've never heard of such a thing. Because if I was chasing her around the store, I'm sure I would have been asked to leave the mall and or arrested. Why do you believe that? What you mean why do I believe that? Because... Why do you believe that? Okay. I'm, I don't really don't want to play this game again today. You know, this happened to me Saturday. I'm very emotional about it. Now, Rayshard cuts to the video of the woman behind the camera going over a police report where the woman says she started to have a panic attack after she was being filmed, which, by the way, is captured on the video. And then she goes into the police station and argues with the officers. Now, 
At this point in time, I'm going to point out that there are cuts in this video. Obviously, the conversation is significantly longer than what is being portrayed. And I would think at some point in time, the police would have communicated to this woman just based on the address of the woman that she was going after that she was, in fact, mentally disabled. But this doesn't make the cut of the video. It's completely left out. And again, we have Rayshad Ritchie asserting in the affirmative that she's definitely not mentally disabled when she 100% is. Adrian? Yeah, um, you know what, this, a lot of people thought it was funny when they watched that Karen act up, roll on the floor, scream, and accuse the black woman of assaulting her. And I didn't find it to be funny one bit because I've lived it. Now they bring in this other woman to talk about how, oh, it's happened to her before. You bullied a mentally disabled person and then posted it online in order to get viral fame. Interesting. And then, oh, oh they always take the side of the privileged whites and all that even though everybody came down on this woman and went after her, and she's still receiving violent death threats to this day based on coverage like what was portrayed in Indisputable by Rayshard Ritchie. Now, as images of Miss Elpick ricocheted around the world, an online commentator urged fellow viewers to contact the school district where Mrs. Elphick had an internship to demand that their racist employee be fired. She began getting harassing phone calls, and in April, she actually had to file a police report because somebody who referred to the Victoria's Secret video had called her and threatened to rape and and kill her court record show. Now, I don't know if the commentator that they're referring to is Rayshad Ritchie, who again released her place of employment while lying to his audience and saying that there was no mental disorder, which again, it was an assertion he had no evidence for. He just stated it as a fact because he couldn't care less about this woman because she was a stepping stone to him boosting his own popularity and virtue signaling and selling you the idea of evil white racism around every corner. But the quote from the person who heads the disabled home really hits home, and I just want to read that for you as well. I was horrified. Tom Toronto, president of Bergen County's United Way, which runs the residential complex where Mrs. Elphick lives, said about the video and the aftermath. He called it a total loss of perspective and proportion. She has a disorder. She has anxiety, he said. She had a meltdown. And then the world we live in took over, and it became something entirely different than it actually was. Now, Mrs. Elphick's lawyer argues that her right to privacy was violated after Miss Yukenta shared personal information about her, but the legal filing also highlights newer unrelated videos Mrs. Ukenta has published since the Short Hills Mall incident that are very critical of a landlord and several other retail stores. The filings points to those videos as evidence she has pursued a broader pattern of harassment. Ukenta has made a job out of preying on individuals from behind a keyboard, the complaint states, inciting hate while taking advantage of the victims and the public at large for her own financial gain. So the complaint also says that Ukenta, the woman behind the camera, not only suddenly just asserted out of nowhere that she was confronted by this evil white racist woman who's evil white and racist because she's white and evil and therefore racist but in reality she posts a ton of videos of altercations that she gets in with a landlord other stores and all that in order to take advantage of the public so this woman had a pattern of behavior in getting in these altercations and posting these videos on social media for fame and potential fortune this one in particular appears to be, again, according to the complaint, the one that hit. And she did raise $104,000, so that is in fact true. But the overall point of this story is twofold. First and foremost, Rashad Ritchie should be honorable and issue an apology to this woman that he made stuff up about while also releasing her employer in order to harass her because she was in fact mentally disabled. And secondly, and this is most crucial, People need to stop going crazy over these arguments, which are petty arguments, petty disputes that happen each and every day. The only reason these are being highlighted is because there's such a pathetic and desperate demand for racist incidents and nowhere near the supply to meet them that now race hustlers like Rayshad Ritchie have to go out of their way in order to elevate these stories 
because he doesn't have the violent instances and actual crimes in order to support his narrative. So understand what's going on, understand how you're being manipulated, and understand more crucially that an excerpt, one little video, even if it covers a whole 15 minutes of somebody's life, is not going to tell you everything you need to know about that person, so you shouldn't go on to a threatening and harassment campaign against them just because you caught feels related to a video. But hey, those are just my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you liked the video, show them by leaving a like, subscribe for more content, follow me on my social media, support me via the support links in the description of this video. This has been me talking about an absolutely horrifying story. Till next time.